So last week, we looked at a couple of recent attempts to finally solve the what is a woman riddle. Um, as you may remember, they both failed in spectacular fashion. Their answers didn't even make it past square one. They blew up on the launch pad and killed everybody on board metaphorically. But at least they tried because we finally forced the left to confront this question. They realized they cannot evade it any longer. Uh, they have to confront it. And so all of the best minds in the gender ideology world have set to work. This is like a, a, the Manhattan Project of green-haired gender studies majors. They're all on the problem now. They've been brainstorming around the clock. An all-star team of the smartest and most insightful gender activists in the world, all with comparatively impressive IQs compared to the rest of them, some reaching even into the high double digits, and they've been digging into this problem, deliberating, searching desperately for a solution. And yet so far, a woman is anyone who identifies as a woman is the best that any of them have been able to do. It's as though the Manhattan Project spent years on research and development, and rather than inventing the nuclear bomb, they came up with like a firecracker. Although at least a firecracker is an actual thing. It exists. It makes sense. A woman is anyone who identifies as a, as a woman is nothing. It's not a definition. It's not anything. It's circular. It's incoherent. And yet again, it is the best that they have been able to do. Until now. Here to meet the challenge or to die trying is a writer called Paul John Poles. Paul is a, a self-identified feminine trans man, which I guess is a female who identifies as a male and sees herself as feminine. That presents its own bundle of cords to untangle, but there's not time for that today. Um, it does mean, though, that the writer is coming at this question from a, from a pretty unique perspective. Because usually the gender ideologues who try to tackle the woman question are males who wish to find a definition of woman that will include them. But in this case, interestingly enough, we have a female who wishes to find a definition of woman that does not include her. How will she do it? Well, PJP begins by acknowledging a few points that the gender ideologues usually prefer to ignore. She points out that gender cannot rest on stereotypes and social constructs, as her side usually has it, because that effectively excludes a lot of people from womanhood that she doesn't want to exclude. It also includes her, but she doesn't want to be included. Next, the writer recognizes that a woman is anyone who identifies as a woman is circular and therefore logically invalid. She does acknowledge that. She also points to another problem that I hadn't even thought about with the, uh, you know, a woman who's anyone who identifies as a woman definition. She says that, that hinging the definition of woman on self-identification is a problem for her side because it excludes people who don't yet consciously identify as women, but may at some point in the future. You know, the trans community creepily refers to people who they think might be trans or can be turned trans as eggs. That's what they call them, eggs, right? Eggs that need to be hatched. And uh, they may sort of uh, home in on a boy who they think can be made into a girl, a process that we used to call grooming before every social media site banned the term. But the point is that they want to be able to say that the boy is already a girl and has always been a girl, yet hasn't realized it. That's what they want to say. So when, uh, when, when the boy is nine years old and first says, I'm a girl. Uh, no, it's the, the, the trans side, they don't say that he just became a girl then. They say, no, he, always, he was always a girl, even before that. He, he just came to realize it now. Well, see, that doesn't work if the very definition of womanhood or girlhood relies on conscious self-identification. That's another problem. So, what can be done about this? Here's the writer's solution. I'm going to read now. Quote, This finally brings us to our definition. A woman is an adult human whose subconscious sex is female. The beauty of it is that it doesn't include trans men or cis men. Their subconscious sex is male. And it includes both cis women and trans women. Their subconscious sex is female. And it also doesn't invalidate gender nonconforming trans and cis people. And the best thing about it is that the person who is best qualified to know whether or not you are a woman is still you, which means that we can still keep our beloved ethical guideline of respecting people's self-identification. Except that now the word woman actually means something. Well, no, it doesn't. In fact, it's never meant less if that's the definition. 
Now, I can appreciate that you've made a valiant effort to avoid a circular definition, but unfortunately, your efforts have driven you even farther off the logical path and deep into the woods where it's dark and confusing and no light penetrates through the canopy. Um, it's even worse now. Here's something we haven't talked about in a while. Let me ask you this. What if there was someone out there who kept a log of every single thing you did every minute of the day? What if I told you that's exactly what happens every time you go online? They're logging everything, logs all over the place. Your internet providers like AT&T or Comcast, they're allowed to store logs of every website you've ever visited and can legally sell this data to anyone. That's why I always use ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers, so your internet provider can't see or log what you do online. Now, many of you might be wondering, well, if I'm routing all my data through a VPN, doesn't that mean that the VPN can see what I'm doing and log my data instead? Ah, very insightful. You're right to think that. But many VPNs, in fact, do claim to have a no logs policy, but they've been caught logging customer activity. Anyway, ExpressVPN is different. That's why they're the only VPN I trust, because they use trusted server technology. This makes it impossible for their VPN servers to store any data, including logs of any ExpressVPN customer. And you don't have to take my or ExpressVPN's word for it. ExpressVPN is so confident in their no logs claim that they have had one of the biggest assurance firms audit their technology. So stop letting people keep logs of what you do online. Visit expressvpn.com slash Matt Walsh show right now and find out how you can get three months free. So let's review all the problems with this definition. Number one. Uh, your, your subconscious, by definition, is the part of your mind that you don't have access to. You are unaware of it. Actually, the subconscious or unconscious mind is a psychoanalytical theory invented by Freud. Uh, there are all kinds of logical and scientific problems with it. It also has given risen to all manner of psychiatric fads and panics, such as the infamous repressed memory hysteria back in the 90s, when a whole bunch of women in therapy all realized all of a sudden that they had been abused as children. And uh, then a whole bunch of people got arrested based on that, and it turned out that they were like imagining it. Um, for that matter, the concept of transgenderism wouldn't exist either without these Freudian concepts of you know, the unconscious mind and so forth. So there, there are problems, is what I'm saying, with the whole idea of the subconscious, at least as it has traditionally been understood. But that takes us off on a tangent about how the entire field of psychoanalysis is built on nonsense fabrications and wild theories invented by a bunch of weirdos 100 years ago. We're going to leave that to the side and stay focused. The point is that the term subconscious means, I mean, this is what it means, the part of your mind you aren't aware of. So... If someone is subconsciously female, they wouldn't know that they're female. If you know that you're female, then you are consciously female, not subconsciously. But of course, saying a woman is anyone who is consciously female is just another way of saying that a woman is anyone who identifies as a woman. You're trying to avoid the endless logical loop, which is why you've introduced the subconscious into the equation, but you can't really do that. The subconscious cannot save you. In fact, its entrance into the conversation creates far more problems for you than it solves. Also, your subconscious cannot have a sex. Your consciousness also does not have a, a sex in and of itself. By definition, sex is a physical category having to do with reproductive organs and chromosomes and DNA. You, you are here positing a scenario where a person with a physical sex of male could have a mind, even an unconscious mind, with the physical sex of female. So you have turned the mind into its own physical entity, literally contained inside the physical body and which has its own DNA. This is what you're doing, not to, the, not to the brain, but to the mind. Essentially, you're imagining the human body as some sort of fleshy shell with a, with a whole other person inside it, steering it around. That makes for a good plot point in a science fiction film, but it's not how things work in reality. In reality, you can cut a person open and inspect every part of them, including their brain, external and internal, and all you will find are physical body parts, and every physical body part has physical DNA, which will attest to the physical sex of that person. And that's why your definition doesn't work and makes no sense. And in the end, is even less coherent than the definition that you were trying to avoid giving. That's really the problem, isn't it, though? What you're trying to avoid, that's the issue. See, it's, it's, it's very clear, has never been more clear, that the gender ideologues, really, what they actually want to talk about is the human soul. Every day they move closer to the precipice, inching toward it step by step. 
They, they talk about self-identity and inner awareness and gender identity and subconscious sex now. But what they mean, what they want to say, is that humans have a soul, and sometimes the soul doesn't match with the body. They stop themselves from saying that because they don't want to admit that gender ideology is, through and through, a religion. It's a religious, spiritual claim. It's a matter of faith. This is the secret they're trying to keep hidden, but they're coming closer and closer to dropping the scientific mask and admitting the truth. That this is, this is religious. This is, what they, this is a religious claim. They believe in the soul. And when they say that a man is really a woman, they mean that he is spiritually a woman, that his soul is that of a woman. That's what they mean. Of course, understood that way, it still is nonsense, doesn't make any sense at all. You cannot talk about souls without talking about God. I mean, he's the one who makes the souls and the body. And it's absurd, obviously, to claim that God would make some sort of mistake on the spiritual assembly line and accidentally plop a female soul into a male body. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, what sort of, what sort of uh, vision of God are you now postulating? Some sort of bumbling uh, fool up there in heaven that's just like, you know, throwing different souls into mismatching bodies, has no idea what's going on. Besides, this concept of souls is built on a, this concept, the concept that the gender ideologues have, is built on this weird kind of dualism where the soul is seen as, once again, an entity located inside the body and steering it along, like, like the body is some sort of two-legged SUV. But in reality, our souls and bodies exist in harmony with each other. It's not that we are bodies and we have souls, or that we are souls and have bodies. We are souls and we are bodies. We cannot be one thing spiritually and the opposite thing physically. That, that's a, a, a contradiction. You might as well say that you have the body of a human and the soul of a raccoon or an oak tree. It just doesn't make any sense. So retreating into the spiritual realm will not actually save gender theory. It actually makes it even more absurd than it was when it was judged purely on a scientific basis. But at least if we are talking about it spiritually, at least then the conversation is being had in an honest way. At least the gender ideologues would finally be saying what they actually mean. And that would be progress. Though again, it will not save them or our friend Paul John Poles from being today canceled. Well, before you go, uh, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. And while you're at it, if you want to go watch or listen to my full show, head to dailywire.com and subscribe. You can also catch my show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. So go check it out now. I demand it. Your compliance is somewhat appreciated.